Okay, so hi everybody. This is the, I'm going to call it the Trade the Fifth monthly support webinar because the new website is under development at the moment and we are moving from wave5trade.com to tradethefifth.com. So uh, this is our October monthly webinar. Before I start though, I want to announce that I'm flying from Europe over to the West Coast. I'm conducting a day's Trade the Fifth training, W5T training, on Saturday the 1st of December in San Diego. The tickets are on sale. If you're watching the recording of this video, please email me at uh, paul at wave5trade.com with the number five, and I will give you the details. We've got early bird discount on at the moment. They've just gone on sale, and I'm uh, spending a whole day training you guys from 8 a.m. in the morning till 5 p.m. includes breakfast and lunch as well. So come and spend the day with me. It will be a great day. So let's crack on with the support webinar. First of all, um, I'm going to be using Think or Swim version a lot today because I want to talk about the version two of the um, day trading add-on suite, which we've just made the recording of the boot camp for, and all of those that have purchased it was sent an email with the recording on. Okay, uh, and also I've had we've had quite a few new users of Think or Swim and isolating the bar count and, and translating what we see in those scanner results in the stock scanner membership. There's some questions about that as well. So I wanna cover that today. Uh, we will look at, think, uh, 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 sorry, at, uh, at Ninja Trade if somebody wants to, but everything works pretty much the same. I just wanna go uh, and cover a lot of these today. So I just wanna remind everybody the basic rules for setting these up. Okay, this is a 15 minute chart on ESRX. Okay, this uh, triggered in my in the new stocks uh, day trading service, um, which will be launching soon. Um, and the basic setup to remember 535 pulls back between 90 and 140 percent of the highest point on wave three. To measure that, I'm going to go through it again, guys. This is a full webinar. It's for me to remind you how all this works. So we're using the FIB extensions. We're going to the highest point on the oscillator on wave three. We click. We go to the zero point. We click again. We bring it back to the highest point on wave three, and we click for the third time here. Okay. Now, as standard, as default, I've got 90 and 140 on there. Okay, so as you can see, the wave four pullback is between 90 and 140%. You can adjust that if you haven't got it as default. Okay, if the price pulls back here, I will talk about it in a second. We're talking about the 535, we're between 90 and 140%. If you click edit properties there, you can change the 90, the 140, you can uh, set as default, or you can change them all in there. Okay, now, the next thing is the wave four pullback, and I'm using this as an example. The pullback zones are FIB levels, and when you're trading FIB uh, zones, you look for sticky zones. Not one, there's no fresh air between any candles and these zones, okay? They're, when you're trading Fib, Fibonacci zones, Fibonacci levels, if you get the candles hanging on to them, and sometimes they hang on to them like glue, uh, they're still good, okay? So we've got our pullback zones, green, amber, red. We have not left those and got a clear candle below, and then we pulled back up, okay? The stochastic, we've got the false breakout bar at the top here. We've pulled back against it and we're looking for a long um, because we've crossed over against a strong bullish trend and is likely wanting to go back. Right. Entry. Sensible entry here because we did have a deep pullback on the, on the, on the, on the FIB zones. We have gone way above here. So our entry was at 95.65. Okay. So we, we entered basically just above this candle. Uh, we pulled back a little bit, we've got a high support level, and this is where we are right now, we're about break even. Okay, now <clears throat> I'm using the MTF.cloud from 
the day trading add-on suite to help me with this. Now, um, I've got the cloud on there from the day trading add-on suite. I haven't got a lot of the other stuff, but the main thing is I can change this, and this is part of the boot camp in that we can change the time frames on this multiple time frame dot cloud. So this MTF dot cloud signifies where the price is. This is our, this cloud you see here in pink. This is our special W5T EMA cloud. Now we look for this to hold as support. Also, this tells us where it is. So if it's green, for example, we're on the 15 minute here, the top row is green, it's above the cloud. The next row, okay, is green as well. And you see the top four rows, we get the green square. So we're, we're basically a green, all multiple time frames. Now, if I can go in and just show you how to set that up. So those that have the day trading add-on suite, you can use this for stocks on larger time frames. You see here the period one to five, okay? Period five is the top dot on your thing. So they're just a, a, you know, the opposite way around. But I put the current time frame I'm in, then I've gone up to an hour, and then a daily, and then two days, and then a weekly. So I've gone up all of these time frames. And then you can just change those in the hourglass section. The main thing here for me is our key is this weekly row of dots here. This is a strong bullish trend. We now have all the dots above the cloud on the daily, the, uh, sorry, yeah, the, the two daily, the daily, the hour, and the 15 minute. That's why we get the green square come up, okay? So this is a good signal. Again, it's just used for day trading, but we can use this NTF.cloud really, really uh, good with, with stocks as well well so this is this is a trade we're in at the moment if i uh and then obviously we've got the risk reward between the stop losses below the way four is normal we've got this conservative entry and then we've got our automated target zone up here so we've got a one to two into the middle of target zone there really really sensible um risk to reward i'm going to restore those cells in a little bit and go to cmi okay so this is on the hourly Very similar sort of trade. Oh no, we're trading this on 30 minute. I can't remember now. Um, but we're, we're in profit on this as well. Same signal service. And the guys in the trade room have probably already seen this anyway. It's had a good day today. We entered this yesterday after the gap up on this fifth wave move. And it's exactly the same sort of thing. 5.35, that sort of thing. I'm not sure we're trading off 30 minute though. Um, Right, it's got nothing to do with Ichimoku cloud, Trevor. It's an EMA cloud, estimated moving average cloud, okay? And it's specifically designed for wave five trade, for, for day trading uh, and for trading stocks in that fifth wave. You usually find that the cloud acts as support or resistance on wave twos and fours to get to give you a good um, scenario of where that stock is and how those support. So if you, if we just go back to, um, let's go to J and J for example here. Okay. Now I'm going to go on to the 30 minute a minute. I just want to show you the cloud. So you can see the cloud here. We were hanging around the EMA cloud here, and then we get this bullish move, which is the wave three. Comes back in test support in here, and here just keeps going high. Then we pull back on the wave four, comes back below, and now we're back above the cloud, and we're going for it on our trade on JNJ from the trade room, okay? Uh, entry was 140.03, and this is looking good now, this trade. Forming a bullish flag today. But that's how the cloud works. And the cloud really, um, yeah, exponential moving average, Jerry. Yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, it works better on lower time frames, okay? And it was specifically designed for our day trading suite, which I will bring over now for futures. Okay, so we have uh, two minute time frames here. I've just changed these for, from earlier. Um, in fact, let's bring over, 
Uh, no, let's just let's have a quick look at this one here. So we will go for the down, okay, YM on futures. So this is a two minute time frame. So I'm just going to make this, this one a little bigger here so you can see. Okay. So I'm going to go over this again. There is the boot camp training when you buy the day trading add-on, but I want to go over the features again and explain what they are, how they work, and all that sort of thing. Okay. So forget about the wave count for now. I'm just going to isolate that down here after this range bound period. So I'm just going to go for a... Uh, 7,100 maybe, yeah, 7,100. So again, when you're isolating, let's just go back a second. It doesn't matter whether you're on a daily or a two minute chart, okay? This is a range bound period. It's not part of a trend, okay? We're looking for a decent support level especially on two minute when we're day trading to try and find where we are in the trend. Okay. This one does have a little bit of support down here. Um, but in reality, during the session, we found a bit of support here. So when you're day trading, you've got to find the recent support level and look where you are on that trend. So I'm just going to just change that over a second. And then when we, we've said bar 7,001 and remember, in the Elliott Wave Oscillator version two, the top of the three subcharts, we move from the writing that says W5T Oscillator V2. We've then got a set of numbers in green and then a set of numbers in white or yellow, depending on your screen. This is the bar count. You watch that bar count now as I move my cursor, okay? That changes. That's the bar count. So if I want my isolation there that's 7099 okay then i go onto the hourglass i go to uh where are we now w5t elliott wave version 3 7099 click the gear wheel and i'm going to change the start bar to 7099 whoops 7099 Okay, apply. Give it a time. Okay, it's um, it's a special high and low moving av exponential moving average, Trevor, for uh, weight five trade, um, and it tells you that it's really sticky support and resistance zones, especially on sort of three, two, three, five, 15 minute. We've even found them very sticky on the daily time frames for wave fours. So they find really good support there. So what we try to do is combine, especially on the day trading add-on, is combine the FIB pullback zones, the, the, the green, the amber, and the red pullback zones, which are Fibonacci levels, with our EMA cloud now, okay? Uh, so you've got basically EMAs and FIB levels trying to look for those real good support levels. So this just needs to calculate a little bit more. You'll have to excuse me, I'm running probably five or six different bits of software on this computer plus this webinar. Uh, so the dot cloud's just taking a little time to, to, um, to respond, but um, it's because I've got... Uh, 12 charts on TOS, uh, I've got eSignal running, I've got NinjaTrader running, and you name it. So here, on the two minute, we're just waiting for the dot cloud to finish calculating. So uh, we missed uh, the fifth wave move on uh, YM on the two minute. This is, this is again, when you're day trading, guys, you've got to recognize these range bound periods that's not a trend once and again with the day trading add-on suite we have the open and yesterday's close these are big levels okay once it pushes out from there and starts reaching for the sky 
okay, getting through the next pivot level, that's the trend we're after today. And we're after a pullback against that trend. And that's what happened. Then we get the move higher and it hits the fifth wave target. Okay, now the dot cloud has now changed. So I'm going to talk through this as well. So we're going to start off by, we're just going to enlarge the multiple time frame stochastic. So version two on the, the day trading add-on, we've got this multiple time frame stochastic. So we've got the standard one that you see normally with the false breakout bar in yellow and the cyan and red false breakout. Okay, you see on the way four, our false breakout, our, our stochastic came over and crossed over in the oversold zone. Tick in a box, that's what we need. Now the cyan is, this is the 15 minute stochastic with the orange here. This is all false breakout. So this is strong bullish trend. So when we pull back on there on the normal one, with this it really wants to return to that strong bullish trend. So that's why we've got this multiple time frame stochastic for day trading to really identify those strong potential moves. Now, the next thing is the multiple time frame dot cloud. Okay, so with this, just go over these settings here. MTF dot cloud version two. So we have the two 30 hour, two hours and daily. Okay, the main thing is the daily is our anchor. Thanks, Jerry. Um, so the daily is the anchor here. Okay. And then these go down in time frames to our two minute, which is the top one, which defaults automatically with our time frame two minute here. So as you can see, we had this pullback on the way four, where the dot card went from cyan, where the price action came below the cloud, to red, sorry, cyan in the cloud, to red below the cloud, and then the pullback goes back to cyan here, okay? And that's the signal there to go long when we get all four green and the red, the, sorry, the green square gives us a signal to go long because all four dots are green. We've got the stochastic that's crossed over against the false breakout bar. We've got a 535 oscillator pullback between 90 and 140%. Let's just measure that again. Okay, so we have Fibonacci extensions. Highest point on the during the wave three is here. It's not at the wave three. It's the highest point on the oscillator during the wave three, which is all the way up here. Okay, we then come down to the zero line, we click again, and then we go back up to the highest point on the wave three. And as you can see, whoops. Five thirty-five is between nineteen and one hundred and forty. So, as you can see now, when we're day trading, not just our normal indicator suite with those uh, that wave four pullback into the pullback zones, we've got the multiple time frame stochastic giving us a really strong bullish trend on the normal st on the five minute. We've pulled back against it. We've got the pullback on the MTF dot cloud, which is turned back to green. We've got five thirty-five oscillator. We've um, We've got other rules that are in the strategy that we discuss in the boot camp, um, but it talk, they talk about risk to reward, pivot points, things like that. So we wouldn't be entering until we're above this pivot point. But our entry was around about here, okay? And it was, it was a one to one, it was a quick trade. So, yes, the anchor trend is the important one. We would not trade against that. Now, if we go to another one, we can see the anchor trend on RTY currently is red. It's the only index that is because it's really suffering. Okay. So the anchor trend on RTY is red. So we are looking for bearish traits. Okay. Let's see if we can find an example for you from today. 
Okay, we have one here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just, the wave count, okay, I'm just going to isolate up here. I think I've already isolated there. Let me just check, otherwise it will take a while to re repopulate, and I don't really want to do that because this is an MTF.cloud um, strategy and not a Wave 5 trade strategy. There's three main strategies with this day trading add-on suite, okay? 6776. Six. Remind you again, guys, I need to re keep reminding you. In the Elliott Wave Oscillator, version two, the top of the sub charts, the yellow stroke right white figures that is the bar count as so my my cursor cursor will run along the cat along the chart we get the bar count okay on that a pivot at the top there we have six seven seven six so we go into here we go to the yes it's at six seven seven six already i can see there okay so i've already done it so what we're looking for here on RTY, anchor trend is red, okay? So the, the pullback against that, the dots go from cyan to green because we come above the cloud. And then we come back down. Where's the entry for this? The entry is very, very simple here. Stop loss here, just above that pivot. We've got a big range bound period here. This is our entry, okay? Below all of that noise. So again, let's just go through this. Now, there are certain rules to this um, strategy if you like, okay? I'm not gonna go through all them because it's part of the boot camp when you buy the day trading add-on. But some of the basics are, we have the false breakout at the bottom, okay? On the normal five minutes. Whoops. So we're going along this range bound period here. We pull up back against it. We find resistance at yesterday's close, which is part of the day trading add-on, and the open of today, okay? we put So we're pulling back against the main false breakout stochastic. We're crossing over in the overbought zone. It comes back down, fails, come back up again, and we get the red arrow just coming through here, okay, on this bar. Now, look at the pullback on the MTF.cloud. We go from all red with red square, as it pulls back up against the cloud, we go cyan, green, cyan down on the third one. And then as it starts, the price action starts to come back down, we go all red. We get the red stochastic arrow, we get the breakout signal here, and that's where we go short, right there. And this is where it came down to the next pivot to the tick. The cloud, works better and is designed for lower time frames. It's for day trading, Trevor, okay? It's part of the day trading add-on suite for Think or Swim. So this is a two minute chart. So two minute, three minute, five minutes, 15 minutes, probably okay as well. Uh, we're still doing some testing for the cloud on the daily time frames for the swings, but again, it was designed for day trading. Okay, so can you see how simple this trade setup was? Yes? Any questions about this particular trade setup? There's three strategies with a day trading add-on. There's trading the third wave, the fifth wave, and the MTF.cloud. And those are usually breakouts from long range bound periods. So the dot cloud can be used on, on trading stocks on larger time frames, okay? Um, but not, uh, not the, the false breakout stochastic or anything like that. The dot cloud can be very useful, which I, I'd give you an example from earlier. Let's just restore that a second.
Okay, so what I will do, Jerry uh, is part of my training team and inner circle, and he has really helped and basically built this um, in, a day trading add-on for me. So he's written some articles in the blog. Now, I'm going to share the link for this, for an article, which talks about using that ntf.cloud all those dots on stocks and how to change how to change the parameters of those that MTF dot cloud. So that's the link there, okay? In the chat box. It's all covered on the um, boot camp video which has been recorded and been sent out and has been sent out to all of those um, that are uh, on there. So now look at this NQ trade. Okay, you'd think really you want to go short here. It's against the main trend. You don't go. You don't know this this real big support level could hold here, you see. And that's against the key trend. That's the main thing there. So we've had a good look at the day trading add-on. I've given you some examples also on stocks here um, on ESRX uh, and J and J and CMI that we're on at the moment. Now Again, it's all about isolating the start of the wave count as well. Sometimes it's best to start. If I'm on a 30-minute chart, I go back 30 days. If I'm on an hour chart, I go back 90 days. Start at zero, see where you are. When you're getting those signals from uh, the, the Stochastic Scanner membership. Now, this is raw data that you get there, okay? You've got to understand that this data is giving you a snapshot at the close of the day, the previous day. This gives you a certain amount of filters. Now, when you put it on your chart, some of them will not present a good wave four and a fifth wave move. It just won't do it. You know, we've got to throw quite a, you know, quite a lot of filters in there to filter it down. Now, you're paying $97 a year. That is going up to $29 a month, but if you're already paying, it's fine. You won't get charged extra. But the data, um, you know, if, for example, I have one scanner, um, one scanner costs me $600 a year plus $200 a month data. That's just one scanner, okay? When you put all of those scanners together, it's very, very expensive. So you've got to think about what you are getting right now on that stock scanner membership. Now, it is good. It could be better, but it gives you a starting point. And that's the main thing here. In this stock scanner membership, each day you download the spreadsheet. So when we look at the potential long fifth wave for, trades for today, okay, we download the spreadsheet, we click on the image, we download the spreadsheet, and let's get it downloaded and then have a look. Because this is just a starting point. Not all of them will be good. But they meet the basic rules for our scan, okay? Now, those basic rules are a starting point. I keep re repeating this because that is the case, okay? It is a starting point. So let's go for uh, something on the daily, maybe. I don't know. Uh, there's a lot on the daily today. I'm just going to pull the spreadsheet off so I can see the spreadsheet and the chart, if that's okay. And we'll try and do, uh, let's do 60 minute purely because I've got the 60 minute charts up there. So let's have a look at Pandora um, on there. Let's go to the 60 minute chart. If I can maximize that, it might work. Okay, now we are looking for trends and we're looking for pullbacks against trends, guys. So this has come up for a potential long on the 60 minute. okay? Now, obviously, we've had today's price action, so that's not quite right. That was a scan from yesterday. Um, you know, this isn't a good-looking trade. We, we've come down. We've had, I mean, look, when you look at this stock this straight away, I'm not going to redo the, the wave count right now, but you've got a massive gap here, okay? After a range-bound period, we come back down to the same range, and we're going sideways. The, the, the pullback yesterday presented, this would have been the low, okay, so let's just 
have a look there very briefly. What four count? Five nine five. Let's have a look. Five nine five. This is at random, so it might work. It might not. Okay. So again, it's not a great bar. It's not a great count because we're not really in a trend. After that gap up, I've isolated down those. We had a one, two, three, four, five really quickly. Yeah. And then we had the pullback yesterday, and then it's gone further back today. That won't be on the scan tomorrow because that's pulled back down. We're looking for a trending stop. I don't think IQ is trending either because I'm in that longer term. That's not trending at the moment. That's trending down. Uh, I'm trying to find something. The idea is to go through these and... Again, when you've done the boot camp, the main boot camp training, now this again, on this one hour chart, it's very bitty and gappy, which means low volume. You walk away from it straight away. It's no good. Yes, it will meet the main criteria, but there's, there's not enough volume because it's so gappy. I'll try a couple more. So here, we're on the 60 minute. We've had a signal for a wave four. Are you really going to trade that? It's gone sideways, okay? Technically, once we do all the isolation and everything, there was probably a wave four there. But you've got to be very sensible with this. So a scan is only as good as the information you want out of it. When you put basic uh, rules in for a wave four, you know, you will probably get a wave four here. But there's no trade there. It's going sideways. It's not a pullback. So you move on to the next one. It's a starting point. Okay. So this one here, we've had a really good move on this one today, actually. Let's just isolate those lows at 545 down at the low there and have a look. 545. And try that one again. Okay, so again, very big moves. We we've not we've come round really deep. You see this previous this pull down here just broke the trend, and then we started again, and then we we pulled back yesterday, and then today we've gapped up. It's not trending. It really isn't trending. I'm going to try one more WWE. Why not? Oops, too many W's in there. Okay, and that's gone deep. So the again, the wave count's different to what it was last night. Okay. This was a wave four last night. From these lows, we had a one, two, three, four. But because it's pulled back below here, it's broken the rules, it's recounted. But this was a wave four yesterday, and that's why it came up on the scanner. But today, it's broken that. It didn't go higher. There was no entry, even if you'd set that up. But you've got to think. I, it's very difficult for me to do this now because we are on the wrong side of those results because the results yesterday, that was the low. We had a one, a two, a three, and that was the four just here where my cursor is. And then that's why that scanner signal came out. Now, obviously, the wave count's going to be different right now because we're live. The markets are open. It's pulled down a new low, and then we've gone higher again. Let's just have a look at actually isolating down here a second. It's not going to make any difference, but we'll 570. 570. With the videos every day, I do a video every day as an example, um, just about every day. 
of setting these up and I do talk about isolating that wave cap. So yes, it's made no difference because we pulled back too deep, okay? FXI, one hour. Ooh, that's nasty. We're looking for a morning star tomorrow for a gap up. That is very nasty. Uh, five, two, six. Five, two, six. Oops. Very hard, yeah. I mean, I've got a long-term holding of this tower, but it's not a it's not a great intraday trade uh, because we've had the gap down today. So I've isolated at these lows here, guys. It's given us the one, the two, the three, but then we gap down into the amber zone. We gap back up again here. Now we've gapped down into the red zone. This is an ugly looking shot. I wouldn't touch it, okay? And I'll tell you why. Because it will probably gap up tomorrow, okay? And leave this daily, today's sort of daily um, indecision doji, if you like, which is slightly green, on its own and cause a morning stop. And then you'd need the confirmation date afterwards, and then you look for an entry. You've got no risk to reward there. Your risk reward's got to be above this pivot line here. So you're talking 1 to 0 0.9. So there's very, very little risk to reward there. And these gappy stocks are not good to trade, especially intraday. Now, on a daily time frame, if you were looking for a longer term move, this would, if we gap up tomorrow, this on its own would be a morning stop. Okay, because we'll have the gap up tomorrow. It will hold the gap and we'll have a good starting signal. The following day, if we get a bullish move and it goes above this wave three high, 44.45, that's a good uh, entry position for FXI. Yeah, uh, again, I'm trading this longer term uh, anyway, and well, I'm investing in this longer term anyway. So this is the weekly. And we are at 19 here. You see this low? So I'm going to isolate at 19. Oops, that's the wrong one. We'll try that again. There we go. 19. So I'm going to pose a question to you now, guys, and hopefully you are listening. Why wouldn't I enter this fifth wave trade on the weekly? There's something there that tells me it's biased bearish. False bar on the bottom. That's it. Correct, Jerry. These false breakouts on the bottom denote a strong bearish mood. If we were to go for a fifth wave move now, we've got to make sure we're up in the top in the overbought zone and we're getting a false breakout on the top. Okay, To go long right now on FXI on the weekly, and again, look at the 535. It's breaking the rules. Let's measure it. Again, remember, highest point in the wave three, Click, zero point, click. Back to the highest point of the way three. The 9140 has been broken. There is false breakout bars on the bottom. It looks like a great pullback, but I tell you now, it's got a lot of work to do. To get back into this bullish momentum, we've got to get back in there and it's got to keep going. So we've got to look for, for me, I know where I am on this one. It's a longer term investment. 
and I'm looking for a second entry um, quite a bit higher than where we are right now. Okay, because we've broken the rules. It's bias bearish. The pullback has been too long on the 535 and we keep breaking out falsely in the oversold zone. So it's a very, very tough uh, investment, really. Really, really tough. You, again, if you're looking pure risk to reward here, look at the low on the wave four. Your entry's got to be above these pivots. That was a rejection. And, um, okay, we came down, we, caused, we formed a wave four. I wouldn't have traded this anyway. Um, because we were not pulled back on the 535, but we pulled out and rejected the highs. We put our entry there. Our risk reward, we would risk 1% to win 0.9. So again, we've got nothing going for us except for the wave force find support in the red zone, in our pullback zone. It's found support underneath the cloud as well. So you've got to remember the point of trading the fifth, the point of trading this fifth wave is that the wave four behavior is so important. It's paramount. We have to have the, the 535 oscillator between 90 and 140, whether that's on a monthly, a weekly, or even a two minute, okay? We need it between 90 and 140. The false breakout, if we've got one at the top, we need to pull back against it and then it needs to want to return. This one just kept going down. We got the false breakout at the bottom denoting strong bearish bias. To trade against that, it's like pulling up back against elastic band. It will probably bring you back down to those lows again. So you've got to, got to build the whole picture. The whole point of this indicator suite is to build the picture and to then say, no, I am not trading this. It doesn't meet my criteria. And the criteria is quite simple and you repeat it over and over again, okay? Does that make sense? Remember, 95% of your trading day, you're finding reasons not to get in a trade. If you can't find reasons and everything lines up, you get in. Let's change that back to hourly. Okay, anybody want me to look at anything else? Whether it's Forex. Specific stock, futures. DXY. Longer term, okay, let's have a look at long term on DXY. Um, maximize sell. Now, is it just DXY in Think or Swim? No, it is dollar DXY. Going weekly. No, the neighbor does. And it's annoying. Bloody dogs barking. We go five year actually. Mm, limey. We've come from quite a low. I'm just trying to what you mean what you need to do here, George. We're not using the MTF dot cloud. We're on a lot larger time frame. It just doesn't show up, okay? Because it's not designed to. So what we got here, this previous, I like to draw these zones in, and these zones will forever stay on my chart, okay? So I don't trade the X Y, but I'll put them in. I'm looking at this pivot here on this wave five, and then I'm going to look left, and I'm going to go to the high as well, and I'm going to draw so there. I'm going to draw a zone in there because that is a very strong support and resistance zone. Okay, so I've drawn that in on the weekly. As you can see here, this is where we had the previous wave five pivot. We had the rejection on the weekly channel. We go back and we look left. Let's see if it is strong. Okay, and let's draw in our strong areas for you. 
Now the bloody birds are singing. God. So we've got a lot of consolidation here on the weekly. That's a very strong level. We've got strong resistance here. Whoops. There we go. And we have resistance here. So this is a strong price right now, technically. Okay. So we really wouldn't be wanting to go long below there. Okay. We could play the breakout trade here. Now, I quite like this move that we're currently in, but probably on a daily time frame. So let's go down to the daily. Okay, Don, I'll have a look at that in a second. So remember now, I want to. I don't need to isolate. Why don't I need to isolate? Because the fifth wave has hit the low point here. Then we've had the one, two, three, four, five. The five has gone through our target zone and hit this and caused that uh, continuation of that uh, resistance zone there, George. Okay. So the Elliott Wave Suite's done its job. It's already, and you should recognize from that low, from that wave five, that first move up is a one, two, the wave counts, good. Where are we right, right now? Okay, so we've pulled back. We've got this high. We're looking for a potential breakout here of around 97,173, something like that. Now, if we get a close above there, this wave count's going to change, okay? And we're going to be re-isolating. Look at this support level here on the daily. Let's just draw that in. You've got to build a picture on your chart, and that picture will stay there forever. So at this point here, where we are now, and I'm going to take that across because I don't know when it's going to affect in the future, but this is a really strong support level. We've got a double bottom here, George. We've got a technical double bottom on DXY. So we've gone from the weekly, we've put our main support resistance zone in that's going to affect us right now. We've gone down to the daily and we've seen we've had a really good trend up. It's bounced off this big resistance level, but we've had this double bottom now. So trading the double bottom, where do you enter the long? Anybody? Come on. Tell me, if this is a double bottom here, one, two, where we go long? Above that fifth wave resistance zone, above the pivot, that's our long entry, okay? Once we start to get through there and we close above there, that's when we'd start to consider a long. That's when we would redo the wave count, okay? Because what is likely to happen, and I'm not saying it is, I haven't got a crystal ball, guys. What is likely to happen is, uh, and now I'm not so good on drawing this type of stuff, so you'll have to bear with me here. So we will get a move like this in theory. We will test this again, okay? And then we'll come back for a higher support level, probably around this big resistance level here. And that will be the wave two. Okay. Then we'll be wanting to trade the third wave. Okay. We're wanting to go through this pivot point here, remember? Okay. So our entry is going to be down here somewhere. Okay. So this is not strictly a fifth wave move, but it could be because this daily time frame, these pullbacks and these moves could mean depending on where it is, on a 60-minute time frame, we'll be trading the fifth wave. Because quite simply, this could pull, this could come down, this could come, come through, get a bit of a nosebleed, and then pull back on a short pullback to this level. So you've got to keep this in mind. And this is why these strong support resistance zones, you've got to draw on your chart and keep on your chart. Because this move... On a 60 minute, this would be a wave four, and that would be the fifth wave move. Okay. So 
we really are looking for a close above 97. And then you've got to start doing your restart doing your wave count. Okay. So let me just, um, I'm just going to put that back to the 60 minute and then we're going to look at ES. So go, um, this was 60 minutes. CMI. I just need to get back to my normal watch list. Ooh, that's doing well, guys. That's doing well. I, again, I've got to redo the wave count there um, for the for this trade. Zero, I'm sure it is. Current moment now will four nine two. And then we'll get ES and bring that over because it's on a separate chart. So ES, let's go big on there and I'll bring it over. Okay, let's go small there. Hit the tips, the uh, Okay, that's holding well. Let's bring ES over. Right, so longer term done on ES. So let's go for weekly, five year. That's going to be interesting. We're near the highs. Give it a while, guys. You can see my memory is low because I've got way too much running. J and J looks like it's going to close near the highs, Jerry, which is good for that trade. I'm just looking on my other computer at the moment, guys, while this is sorting itself out. Uh, yeah, the J and trade, J and J trade's looking really good. And CMI as well. You'll have to bear with this, guys. It is running quite slow because I have uh, seven futures charts, uh, a stocks template, and just about everything else running. So you're going to have to bear with me. In fact, let's just pull up. Um, I'll just do RTN while that's uh, going, guys. I'll do that on Ninja Trader. While that's sorting itself out, I will go on RTN. I'm already in this. I'm already in this. Um, Okay, uh, Jerry, can you just give a very simple explanation on the estimated move high and low without giving, you know, too much detail there, just base, basics to answer Richard's uh, question. Trevor, I am in and around my trading station for the European and the US session. But I too, do take breaks. Uh, I am quite active during the first half of the US session and the hour pre-market, pre, uh, pre because I do my pre-market prep. Um, but I do take uh, a, a lot off. So you, Jay, you got in at 200, is that right? I think, I, I can't remember what our entry was, Jerry. I think it was just above there. I think it was above this pivot here. Um, I don't remember what our entry was on uh, RTM. 
I think we're trading it off the weekly as well, actually. Hang on. We are trading off the weekly, that's why. There we go. So, myself and the inner circle are already in this one. Mm, you picked a good one there. Jay, we, um, we entered, actually, let's pull this down. So it works on the weekly. Investment-wise, not a trade, buying physical shares here. This big rejection on the way four is crucial. If you get a big rejection on the way four into this into these uh, fib zones here there's a good chance it's going to go on and make those new highs and the entry was very simple here it was above the high of those rejections so around about 20282 something like that so yeah we're in it already if you got in at 200 well done uh, that was nice and low outside the 64 moving average low but i always take this just um, i just want to make these a little bit bigger for those that We've got Ninja Trader. If you click on the number, go to properties, font, bold, and whack it up to 30. Okay. And the same there. Just a little trick. So we've had a great way for pullback. Look how that oscillator crowned between 90 and 140. Look at the false breakout. Again, this is perfect. You've got a strong bullish trend. False breakout dots on the top. It pulls back against it. It wants to return to those false breakout dots. So it's moving back up. And this is where we are in the trade right now. Each candle is a week, guys. You've got to be patient with this one, okay? Very, very patient indeed, but it does pay off, okay? Now, when you're managing an investment like this, let me just put in my FIB extensions for the risk to reward, just roughly, okay? Just put my template in there. I've got a great risk to reward on here. It's a good, Let's go to templates. Um, risk to reward with 2%. Okay, so we've got over a 1 to 2 there. Now, you've got to be aware. This level here will be resistance. Okay. So get that on your chart and don't panic if it pulls back against it, okay? <laughs> so that's one thing. You're trading this longer term and you would expect a pullback when it hits that resistance level. But what you're looking for is a higher support, most likely around your entry. Um, because entries, are, for me, are above certain support and resistance zones, okay? So we'll come back down and test there. Now, this is on the weekly. Is there a trade on a shorter time frame? Absolutely. If you, you know, we're in this already. Great trade, Jay. Uh, well done. Uh, I hope you have got this more physical stocks. Okay. Because, Trevor, look, this is week. We won two, three, four, five weeks. This has tried to get through that range. Okay. That is resistance. Yeah, the way three is resistance as well. If you've got a longer term investment, you've got to break through those walls. OK, so you've got to look for these previous resistance and don't panic. But what you can do is you go down to the daily. OK. When it pulls back on the daily. See where you are. Isolate the wave count down here. This was that big rejection, remember, on that weekly. I've isolated down here right now, okay? It's not a great wave count. We are on the way up. We've had a big pullback down, and now we're regaining that. Defense sector took a big bash in last week, and now it's recovering very, very well. But it will get some resistance up here. Look at that. That is the fifth wave target zone as well on the daily. 
That is pretty freaky. Now, go down to the 60 minute. I'm giving a bit away here, multiple time frame strategy, part of my elite training course, which is available on the website. So, but I wanna go through and just show you on the 60 minutes. Hopefully ES would have been loaded up by now. <laughs> okay. No, that's the one minute. I want the 60 minutes. Okay, so this is where we are on the 60 minute. You see this uh, strong um, bullish bias with the false breakout bars. This is where we are. This is where I'll target. Just keep an eye on that 60 minute, okay? Isolate your wave counts. We don't know where we are yet because we haven't reached up there. Um, but again, look for those. I would isolate here and see how it goes, okay? It wasn't a proper wave count. A wave four needs seven bars, guys, okay? Whether it's a daily, a two minute, a three second, or a monthly time frame, a good wave four is a minimum of seven candles. Have that in mind all the time. Seven to 10 candles is perfect. Two candles is not, okay? It's a massive range in two days that was. So that's why it's not, you know, technically it's a wave count but it's not really a proper wave count because it takes seven to 10 days to pull back on a wave four, not two days to hit a wave three and a wave four. Two huge ranges, big volatility. Technically, it labels it, but you've got to realize it's not a proper wave four, okay? So I would see what happens at 2.14. Does it pull back? At this moment in time, we've got this wave count, but as soon as this wave five on the 60, goes longer than the wave three, the rules change and the indicator sweep will make that a wave three. So this is the likely scenario on the 60 minute with RTN now. So we will see, uh, I haven't drawn lines on here for a while, so I don't know if this is gonna work. Okay, this does. So we will see this turn into a wave three, okay, because it will be longer than this original wave three. If it finds then some resistance, which we think it will do, it'll pull back on a wave four, most likely to this sort of level, okay? Look at previous support and resistance levels. They hold very well, okay? We'll find a wave four, and then there could be another opportunity to just either add to your position or just take a little fifth wave trade, okay? And that, I, I teach that a lot on the uh, elite training course um, because multiple time frame strategy is key to consistent profits. Oh, not good, Jerry. Not good. So let's see if ES has loaded. Oh, it has. There we go. Uh, CMI is reacting very well to it, though. At the moment, Jerry, let me just check JNJ. That's doing okay. Uh, ESRX is suffering a little bit because of it. So let's look at the weekly on um, yes. A longer term view, really. Uh, let's go for a one, two, three isolation. I've probably been in the wave four now, uh, the fifth wave. One, two, three. And what's 6,064? That's on a two minute. Oh my God, it's got to recalculate that now. Let 
Well, that's recalculating, guys. I'm just going to restore these cells and look at RTY in a second. Oh, estimated move low is coming up, Jerry. I think I've run out of support levels again. I drew them in some more yesterday. Yeah, I run out of support levels again. I'm going to have to re go back up to my uh, higher time frame charts tomorrow morning and draw in some more support levels for RTY. Okay, so there we are with ES on the weekly. And I, as I thought, fifth wave. Absolutely down a chunk. So longer term on ES. So that again, this is on my day trading add-on suite. I'm on the weekly. So the MTF false breakout stochastic will not work and neither will the dot cloud because this is a day trading add-on suite. I just did the wave count on here to show you. Um, we've had a really great wave. Um, we've had the wave four. We consolidated back down there, okay? Now we moved up and we've tipped the wave five high target. I mean, 3,000 is in that target. Okay, uh, who asked me for this again? It's quite a way up the chat. Um, bear with me. Don, sorry, yeah. Okay, so Don, we are near those highs. We are near the fifth wave target. 3,000 is right in the fifth wave target zone. Um, you know, we're still a little bit way to go. It could get up there. We we're always going to see a bit of resistance up in this wave five target zone here. So the target zone, we are looking at uh, two nine four five fifty to two to three zero one eight. So we're getting there. We're getting very close. That was the all time high a few weeks ago, and we are getting close again this week. Uh, Breaking through this wave three was okay. We was consolidating for a few weeks around that price, uh, but it's very strong. We've pulled back very well. Um, and now we are looking maybe a bit of a pullback. Was there a trend reversal on there? I very much doubt it. Look how far away it is from our cloud here. It's got a long way to come back just to the cloud to find support to go again. Okay, see how the cloud holds the support there? You see, it's not an Ichimoku cloud, but because of the price action, the highs and lows of the EMA, we get the fatter, it, the cloud gets fatter here because of this price action here, okay? Uh, but it just goes to show you, it does hold as good support, comes back and tests it again, really, really good. I know it's only available on the day trading add-on suite, but that's part of the suite. So, Don, does that answer your question on ES longer term? I mean, if you had a longer term bet going along at 2724, it's a lot of ticks. Okay, Don, the version three is the Elliott Wave Indicator Suite. The add on suite, which you need, is available on here to purchase. That has the dot cloud for um, so let's just go back I'm gonna put that on two minutes and then go back to another one and show you what it's all about so that's the link there to get it that's the day trading add-on suite when you do purchase it you'll get the link to watch the training boot camp which I recorded live last week with Jerry um, let me just put that back on the two minute and So it's three main strategies for trading these futures, okay? And that's included in the bootcamp. And it includes, let's go to YM for example. So it's, not, it's, it's enhancing the Elliott Wave indicator suite that you've got with this MTF dot cloud, with the multiple time frame stochastics, the EMA cloud, and then your estimated move highs up here, yesterday's highs, yesterday's uh, close, and the estimated move lows, which are very, very crucial as well. Good, strong pivot points. 
Steve, the dot cloud does work, but not the stochastic, but you have to change the parameters, okay? You have to change the parameters if you are going back up above 15 minutes, okay? And how to do that, again, is in this article on our blog, and I will put it, the screenshots and everything in there, okay? So just put the link in the, in the uh, chat box, and that talks you through how to change the settings for using the dot cloud on higher time frames, okay? Okay, guys, we're just about finished now. The session has been recorded. When I get up in the morning, in the European morning, at what time is it now? Nearly, uh, I don't know what time is it now. Nearly, nearly 9 p.m. here. Um, I will get up in the morning. I will render the video, put it up in the blog, and uh, it will be available for you to view tomorrow. Any last questions before I go? Oh no, my days of being silly drinking beer are over, Trevor. <laughs> Hopefully you can make it to San Diego. Again, they're at this link uh, for <laughs> you're welcome Richard we'll try our best so the details for we haven't confirmed the hotel yet because we're leaving it open depends on how many we get booking Jay okay you bought the early bird okay brilliant looking forward to meeting you Jay uh, you will get follow-up emails with all the event details, everything like that, asking you for your T-shirt size because you're going to get one of the new Wave 5 trade T-shirts and all that sort of stuff. So, yes, all those, uh, those things will come through. You're welcome. I'm looking forward to meeting you as well. Hopefully, Trevor, you can make it and some of the other guys can make it as well. It's going to be a great event. I know there's people coming from Canada all to, to, uh, to meet up with me and, um, and get some training. This is pretty cool stuff. Okay, guys, any more questions before we go? The session has been recorded, Steve. I will render the recording. Um, and put it up on the blog tomorrow, which reminds me to stop recording now before I run out of cloud space.